Okay, so now kita akan pergi kepada the last subtopic in this top in this chapter. That is accrual, cornerstone of accounting. Dalam accrual ni kita akan tengok ialah first the illustrations, second the framework, third is the relevance and limitations, and last but not least is the analysis implication of accrual accounting. Okay. So, jom kita tengok foundation of accrual accounting. The foundations of accrual accounting consists of revenue recognition and expense matching. Okay, so revenues are recognized when both earned and either realized or realizable. So, maksudnya bila earn uh, revenue tu kita dah dapat Ataupun realize sebab ni Will be received lah Kita akan dapat Kita dah pun recognize Okay So aku ni bila kita akan recognize revenue tu Bila kita earn or realizable So kalau expense matching ni Accrued accounting dictates that Expenses are matched With their corresponding revenue So this matching process is different for two major types of expenses that are product cost and period cost. Okay. So apa itu product cost? Kalau you recall back what you had, what you had learned during part 2, math 151, so you can ada period cost, product cost. So product cost ni uh, semua yang direct cost lah. Okay. Apa-apa je yang you beli untuk membuatkan produk tu. That we are going to call as product cost. Kalau period cost ni consists of admin, administrative, marketing. ah uh, Itu. Okay. So apa yang you all perlu tahu ialah product cost tu kita akan masuk dalam kita akan recognize has a cost of goods so lah alright kalau period cost tu has other expenses ok so now let's take a look at the illustration of accrual cost accounting ok So, you all pun boleh refer page 80. Okay, page 80 tu dia terang lebih detail lagi. So, ini hanya summary lah. Okay, I summary sekali. So, case dia macam ni. Okay, an established company, they invest $700 dalam equity. So, this is capital lah. And then, they purchase plain t-shirt for $5 each known as product cost lah and then dia juga ada fixed screen cost of $100 and variable print cost of $75 cent per t-shirt so dia jual sold 25 t-shirts at $10 each for cash And sold 25 t-shirts at $10 each on credit. So, quantity order, 100 t-shirts. Okay. This one. So, now kita akan tengok kalau kita buat cash accounting dulu. Okay. So, dia kata uh, jual 25 t-shirt by cash. So, kita akan ni lah receive t-shirts. T-shirt sales ni 25 t-shirt yang dijual times with. $10 lah sebab kita jual t-shirt dengan $10 kan So payment apa yang kita buat Kita ada Kita beli t-shirt tu 100 t-shirt Dengan harga $5 So dapat $500 Then screen purchase kita $100 Printing charge kita $0.75 cent Times with $100 lah T-shirt per t-shirt okay So we'll give total payment of $675 Okay Lepas so, kalau kita tengok kat balance sheet kita So balance cash kita kita ada 275 iaitu 700 minus with 
cash outflow lah So I akan dapat 275 So bila kita menggunakan cash accounting It shows that Company lost money Sedangkan Ada penjualan Tetapi Bila kita buat Cash flow kita rugi So problem with the cash basis Based on illustration Is that It does not recognize The revenues from 25 shirt That have been sold on credit They tak recognize Okay And all t-shirt purchase Is treated as an expense Ya yeah. Semua ni Sebagai expense And then screen purchase and t-shirt printing is treated as expenses as well. Okay. So now kita akan buat kepada menggunakan accrual accounting. So income statement yang akan kita prepare. Revenue sebab kita dah pun jual 50. That is 25 on cash, 25 on credit basis. So 50 times with $10 each. So you can dapat $500. So expenses kita hanya akan record expenses melalui penjualan t-shirt sahaja. So since kita jual 50. So t-shirt cost kita 50 unit. Darabkan dengan $5 Screen depreciation Sama lah sebab Dia kata ya. Screen cost 100 untuk 100 unit So since kita 50 je kita jual So $50 je lah Printing charges 75 sen times it 50 so total expenses kita ialah 337.50 so I dapatlah net income kalau kat balance sheet pula so cash uh, based on cash flow tu okay, kita ada 275 So cash kita 275 lah So t-shirt inventory ni Ialah yang Ansuk punya yang another 50 ringgit tu Eh bukan 50 ringgit 50 pieces Kita kan ada 100 So 50 kita jual 50 lagi yang unsold So 50 times it 6 ringgit and 75 Ini ialah Cost Harga Untuk menghasilkan satu baju t-shirt Sebab RM5 tu kita beli RM5 tu uh, harga t-shirt RM1 harga uh, screen cost And then 75% uh, 75 sen Is your printing cost So kot total RM6.75 sen lah So t-shirt inventory you ada 37.50 sen So receivable ni Ni kan on cash On credit ha, Ni lah On credit tu Ada lagi 250 So total asset you 862.50 sen So equity Mula Ada orang invest 700 dollar Lepas tu Add you punya net income Jadilah 862.50 So apa yang Perbezaan kat sini Obviously This one And then you punya Expenses Kalau cash Dia ambil kira semua Nampak ni Semua ni Masuk dalam punya expenses Tapi kalau accrual basis Different 
Okay. So when cruel is used, revenues reflect all the t-shirt sales, even those for which payment has not yet been made. So uh, paid by credit lah. Okay. Second, only the cost of making the t-shirt sold is reflected as an expense, including fabric costs, screen depreciation, and printing. Me, hanya t-shirt yang jual saja kita akan ambil kira sebagai expenses dia. However, it is uncertain that all the customer will pay, so the numbers cannot be reliable. Okay, accrual ni is not reliable. Sebab tak semestinya All this receivable $250 you will get You tak You tak sure pun Okay Sebab tu number tu tak boleh di-rely Sebab you tak confirm pun you akan dapat Balik duit you tu Okay so the advantages of cash accounting Easy to understand and straightforward Is tangible and then it's certain about cash flow Sebab memang you guna cash kan So you memang tahulah Senang Okay tapi this advantage of cash accounting ni Is unable to measure cash generating capacity of a company And it's failed to provide a relevant picture of a company financial condition and performance Okay Sebab dia hanya menunjukkan cash je so kalau macam you jual secara kredit tu You tak akan nampak Sebab tu dia kata dia tak tunjukkan A relevant picture of company financial condition So now let's go to the relevance And limitation of accrual accounting Okay, To record revenues when earned And expenses when incurred It reflects better information On profitability, current assets And current liabilities Okay. So, you can provide accrual, accrual accounting juga Provide a accurate statement of financial position As it reflects the level of resources available to generate future cash flow Accrual accounting is able to forecast cash to be received from a customer in the future and then, accrual accounting juga have a better aligned inflow and outflow over time through matching process. However, accrual accounting is subject to some limitations such as imperfect due to assumptions and estimation errors. Itu ya limitation to accrual accounting. Dia mungkin tak accurate sebab Kita based on assumption je Okay So now let's go to the analysis implication of accrual accounting So kita akan tengok mitos Of the accrual cash flow Accrual and cash flow And kita akan tengok the truth of about accruals and cash flow so, mitos yang pertama ialah Because company value depends on future cash flow Only current cash flow are relevant for valuation Okay So, even if we accept that Company value depends only on future cash flow There's no reason to necessarily link current cash flow with future cash flow sebab current cash flow tu memang akan menunjukkan current punya lah future cash flow tu dia tak ada kaitan pun dengan current cash flow sebab tu dia mitos only current cash flow are relevant for valuation not necessarily okay Has this one? Kenapa 
tak semestinya sebab current income is a better predictor of future cash flow than current cash flow okay besides that income better explains stock prices than does cash flow cash flow dia tidak akan menunjukkan uh, harga stock sesebuah company tu increase or decrease no cash flow only show the performance of the business with the cash basis okay so mitos yang kedua all cash flow are value relevant okay so many type of cash flow do not affect company value sebab tu dia mitos sebab cash flow ni bukan semua cash flow adalah relevant sebab ada je dalam cash flow tu yang tidak akan mengefekkan company value for an example cash collected from customer okay dia tak akan affect pun value of the company that's why it is a mythos so yang ketiga mythos yang ketiga ialah all accrual accounting adjustment are value irrelevant okay tak semua accrual accounting tu ialah irrelevant ada juga yang relevant So, mitos yang keempat Cash flow cannot be manipulated Cash flow cannot be manipulated Wrong, okay Cash flow can be manipulated Not only this statement false It is probably easier to manipulate cash flow Than to manipulate income Okay. Sebab tu It's a mythos Salah ya kalau orang kata Cash flow cannot be manipulated It's wrong For example Cash flow can be increased By delaying either capital expenditure Or the payment of expenses Manipulate je figure tu Alright Untuk menampakkan Cash inflow kita banyak So, mitos yang kelima ialah All income is manipulated hmm. All income is manipulated Some managers do manage income And the frequency of this practice may be increased However, security exchange commission enforcement actions Targeted at fraudulent financial reporting And restatements of previously issued financial statements affect a small percentage of publicly traded companies ok so tak semestinya semua income tu dimanipulatkan sebab manager ni boleh ikut practice yang disediakan oleh security exchange commission mitos yang here is that it is impossible to consistently manage income upward in long run so <coughs> that are the mythos of the accrual and cash flow so now let's take a look at the truth of accruals and cash flow so truth ni are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 yeah. okay Terus yang pertama One, two, three Terus yang pertama ialah Accrual accounting is more relevant than cash flow Okay Accrual accounting ni Lebih relevant daripada cash flow For example You boleh tengoklah yang illustration kita tunjuk tu kan Kalau kita gunakan cash Accounting sahaja Business tu akan jadi rugi Akan loss of money 
Sebab tu dia kata accrued account ini lebih relevant. Okay, sebab income tu kita kita terima sekali walaupun dia baru realise. Tak gain lagi, dia hanya realise je. Tapi kita pun recognise income tu, right? Second is the cash flow are more reliable than accruals. Accrual lebih relevant daripada cash flow. Tetapi cash flow lebih reliable than accruals. Sebab cash flow tu memang menunjukkan berapa cash yang company you ada. So sebab tu cash flow lebih reliable. Kalau accrual ni, you tak boleh nak rely sangat sebab dia based on assumption. Yang you akan terima duit tu. Okay. So third ialah accrual accounting numbers are subject to accounting distortions. Okay. Uh, distortions ni maksud dia macam full with errors or false information. Okay. So accrual accounting ni memang banyaklah subject tu accrual distortion lah. Sebab dia based on assumption kan. The lastly is that company value can be determined by using accrual accounting numbers. Itulah the truth of accruals and cash flow. So I harap you boleh basicalah and satu mitos and man satu the truth. And please remember that this chapter only be tested in part A that is MCQ. Okay, and I can do quiz two on this topic. All right. So that's all for today. See you next class. Okay, bye, Swigum.